Hi, this is Leslie. Hope you're well with another update and video. And in this video, I want to share with you um, a recent discussion I had uh, with Dominic Frisby, the author of the book, Bitcoin, Future of Money. Uh, so as you can see, I'm outside uh, in England, in the UK. We have a national lockdown, but actually you're allowed once a day to go out and have some exercise. So I've come out here today with, um, you know, the uh, just doing a bit of walking around the woods, um, just getting some fresh air and all that. Anyway, in my webinar with Dominic Frisby, I asked him a few important questions. And I asked him, first of all, what he thought about the fact that Bitcoin seems to be highly correlated with the stock market, whether it was surprising to him or not. And here's what he said. So Dominic, thanks very much indeed for joining us in this video. Really appreciate it. In regards to Bitcoin, a couple of questions I have for you. Uh, first of all, has it surprised you that how correlated uh, Bitcoin has been to the stock market? Because everyone thought that Bitcoin was going to be a safe haven against the stock market volatility, but it hasn't been. Did that surprise you? Would that actually go in line with what you were thinking? That my no, first question because is there's a huge panic and people are losing money here. So they sell what winnings they got there. And it's a big liquidity event. You know, these things always trade together at first and then over time they separate. So no, I'm not remotely surprised. And then I asked Dominic whether he thought it was a good idea to diversify among other altcoins and cryptos, not just Bitcoin. And here's what he said about that. So my question is, other than Bitcoin, do you think it's a good idea for people to diversify among altcoins? Because a lot of people, the Bitcoin maximalists, I think are what they're called, uh, yeah. seem to think Bitcoin is the only thing. But do you share a different opinion? Do you think it's a better thing to diversify among different altcoins like Ethereum, XRP, and all that kind of stuff? Are you well? They've all got their, they've got their pros and their cons, and the whole they all trade tend to trade together. And there are better ones and worse ones, and there are ones that come into fashion and then go out of fashion. I mean, I, I like Monero. I've always really liked Monero. I just think the privacy implications of it. I think it, it's one of the few coins that has demonstrable real world use uh, that is actually used to buy and sell stuff. Ethereum, I get, has a lot of use in applications, but, but you know, many people say it's flawed. I've I've got a tiny amount of Ethereum. I've got a little bit of Bitcoin Cash, and then you know, you talk to the BSV guys, and and you they, they persuade you. So I'm quite amenable to be persuaded. So I guess, you know, it probably makes sense to have a basket of of altcoins, but I'd be like 80, 90 percent Bitcoin and 10, 20 percent the others. Dominic, just a couple of questions very quickly. What is your price prediction for end of 2020? I know it's a speculative one. I totally get it. I'm not going to hold it against you. But in your view, by the end of 2020, where do you see Bitcoin? Are you bullish or do you see it lower? It will go lower and it will go higher. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to retest the old high. It's going to retest the $20,000 high at some point. Um, maybe do not. See, do you think it will happen? Well, possibly. Not, like, possibly. not this year, but maybe in the next couple of years? Oh, I would have thought so within the next couple of years. Yeah. Uh, your 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 book, uh, Bitcoin: The Future of Money, that was your yeah. second book. You you mm -hmm. got a new book, Daylight Robbery, uh, on tax. Um, can you tell everyone uh, just a few things about it and uh, what they can get out of it? Uh, your new book, uh, the, the, and what just generally uh, what what, what is Daylight it Robbery will change the way you view the world, change the way you look at history, and it will change the it will enable you to see what's going to happen and why those things are going to happen. And it will enables you to see why things happen in the way that they did. It will change your perspective on things. But at the same time as changing your perspective on things, it will do so in an engaging and entertaining way. There you go. <laughs> and they can get it. By the way, Dominic, for you, you said you do, you do gigs. Uh, where, where can people find your stand-up in London? Uh, I think the best way is to follow me on Twitter. Because uh, uh, when I'm doing stuff, I'm speaking on that. Uh, Dominic Frisbee, Dominic Frisbee. Dominic uh, buy, Frisbee. Buy, buy Daylight Robbery and buy the audio book as well, if you like audio books. Oh, it's, it's unaudible? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. So that was Dominic, and it was quite interesting talking to Dominic because he was telling me how the recent uh, virus crisis has hit him quite hard as well, hit his family hard as well, because he gets the majority of his income from doing stand-up gigs. He's actually a comedian as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I can appreciate how this whole crisis with the virus has really hit people. Again, not just uh, Dominic, but also a lot of people uh, in many different professions um, as well. And guys, let me know in the comment section how the recent crisis of the virus, how has it affected you as well? Thanks very much, guys. Bye for now.